Greetings and welcome to Mount Olympus. I am Hercules Invictus. Welcome to our tribute show in memory of Timothy Green Beckley. Um, I perhaps know Tim less than anyone else uh, here gathered, but uh, Tim played a very significant role in my life. Um, when I was much younger, uh, I used to read uh, the books that he wrote or the books that he preserved, because Tim used to take ancient lore that was hard to find and then republish it so that you could uh, pick it up uh, with what money you had rather than going to antiquarian bookstores to find some copy in Europe that would put you out a few hundred dollars. So I really appreciated uh, Tim's uh, existence and I always admired the intrepid band of investigator authors that he had with him uh, that uh, uh, would share their adventures. And uh, it was always a fantasy of mine to be part of this intrepid uh, band. Uh, I met Tim in the very early 90s when John Keel was still around with the Fortean Society. And then uh, we reconnected again in the early 2000s when I started reviewing his movies, because he was making movies at the time, as well as uh, <laughs> his books. And I believe I interviewed Tim on the podcast once or twice, and then I interviewed some of the authors and, and so on. And then uh, we, we faded apart again. And then uh, at some point, I was contacting about something to review. Uh, and uh, uh, I pointed out that I, I write and that uh, my writing at the time was appearing in magazines. So Tim asked for me to write about uh, something. I believe it was on uh, um, simulation theory where uh, the world is not what we think it to be. So I wrote something, I sent it in, it was in that book. And then I think I was in almost every single book that came out after that. And so my dream came true and Tim made it possible. I was part of this intrepid band of people who were investigating strange things and sharing them uh, with uh, the world. Uh, Tim played uh, such an important role in my life uh, that I've decided to uh, dedicate uh, some of what I'm doing uh, to his memory, the things where he was most important to me. Uh, and that will be our uh, ET uh, show and also our cryptid show. So stay tuned for those. And I'm very honored to have uh, people who knew him well uh, here with us uh, tonight. And uh, we will go around and start with uh, Dory Sweat. Dorian, welcome. And it's so great to see you. Oh, it's good seeing you. It's been a while, huh? Yes, it has. Time yeah. flies so quickly. It's amazing. <laughs> So what, what are your fondest memories of uh, Tim and uh, what effect has Tim had on your life? Oh, it's hard to start. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard, you know. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of memories. Um, I don't know, I don't know where to start. <laughs> Would you like to go to Michelle and we'll come back? Yeah, we'll go ahead, Michelle. <laughs> I just tell, I just draw out a blank. Okay. Um, I guess I'll introduce myself first. I'm Michelle. I'm Dorian's oh, daughter. Um, and Tim was my grand uncle. And um, I think, you know, it's interesting, you know, as just as you know, you were just talking about how you met him, you know, the story is so much different for me because we're family. I've known him my entire life, you know. And unlike everyone else here, except my mom, um, you all shared common interests and found each other, you know, it's the kind of kindred spirits or, or whatnot. And, you know, that's, that's not my story. My story is, you know, I, I grew up with him. And so a lot of the subjects that he wrote about and talked about that you guys are all interested in and what brought all of you together, whether it be, you know, UFOs, a cult, you know, uh, or the movies he was making or whatever, whatever it was. Um, I grew up around all of that. And so these are all interests to me as well, but almost because I didn't know any different, you know, um, like I remember you know, my grandmother was his sister and I spent a lot of time at my grandma's house. And, you know, just the VHS collection was all horror, you know? And I didn't, you know, as a child, my selection of movies was like The Blob, you know, <laughs> Night of the Living Dead. I didn't, ha you know, there wasn't anything else on that rack, 
you know? And so I didn't know that, you know, other people's families maybe were watching The Sound of Music or something. <laughs> and I certainly wasn't. Um, and then, so uh, Tim and his, and, you know, his sister and family and everyone was uh, in New Jersey. And by the time I was born in the early 80s, he was already living in Manhattan. And so I think as um, as a as a younging, especially like a, a tween into my teenage years, I wanted to get the hell out of New Jersey and my small town and go to the city. And I had an uncle there, you know. And so I had this amazing experiences. I mean, it was also a different time, but I can remember being 12, 13 years old and getting on a train. And having him, God only knows how we found each other. You know, today we've got cell phones and stuff, but I just trusted that he would be at Penn Station and somehow he was and he'd come <laughs> pick me up, you know? And I can remember stuff like him taking me, you know, down St. Mark's and buying me whatever I wanted. Like I remember I was probably like 12 and he brought, he bought me the cigarette case that I wanted for some reason, you know? Um, and I can remember going back home and, you know, that was just one of many cool things that he bought me. And uh, I can remember, you know, cherishing these items as something that this really awesome man gave me. Um, and, or the Halloween adventure on 4th Avenue. I mean, he brought me there when I was like 10 or something. Mm -hmm. It's still open to this day and it still has, I've been there quite a few times with him over the years and and without him as well and whenever I go there it always reminds me of him and this idea of New York and having places like a Halloween store all year long mm -hmm. you know <laughs> and these were the types of places that I wanted to go to and uh just like he did at 17 18 years old I left New Jersey and came to Manhattan and I never left and I was, uh, you know, the closest living relative in, in terms of proximity, but also we became very close. You know, I think that I was probably the closest thing he ever had to a daughter. If, if it's not my mom, you know, me and my mom, um, he never married, he never had children, but um my mom and I were very close to him and I saw him all the time. And he always, you know, when I try to think about what are my fondest memories, it just like my mom was saying, it's so hard to start because it could just be a fucking Tuesday. You go to his house, he always had something funny to say, always had a story, always, you know, I was thinking about him earlier today because I was kind of dancing around my apartment uh, listening to Blondie and that's what he would be doing you know oh. at 70 something years old I'd come over and he'd yeah, be, be like dancing, dancing <laughs> or you know whatever was going on um and yeah so it's, it is really difficult to kind of pin something down um to say you know what my fondest memories were were of him um but I can say that the last few months uh, it probably took me like six months after he passed to even really start going through his possessions, um, and, you know, doing that thing that family members have to do and clearing out the apartment and stuff like that. And, uh, I mean, you guys, the shit I have found is, <laughs> is crazy, um, you know, actually, Carol, do you know how, when he moved into that apartment? Oh, it was I, with Harold. Uh, mm -hmm. It was Harold's apartment first. You see, 1970, 1969, he was already there. I, I think the late 60s. Jeez. So, I mean, that's how much stuff we're talking about, you guys. Yeah, because I remember going there in my 20s. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, yeah, he's been there a long time. So, I mean, gosh, 
50 some odd 60 years he's been in that apartment so I've got a lot a lot of 60 year old stuff in here so. yeah I have a lot of cleaning up to do um oh, her, well we don't have too much more to do yeah I know right. but it's been over a year <laughs> been working on it a long time uh but I will say that I don't feel as though he's gone especially when I'm in his apartment I still very much feel his presence just kind of around. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that I probably went over my 10 minutes, so I'm going to try to share the time with everybody else. <laughs> uh, thank you. When you were talking about New Brunswick and leaving New Brunswick, um, I have family living in New Brunswick also, and I had no real interest in going to New Brunswick, uh, but uh, when... Uh, until I found out that Tim Beckley was in New, New Brunswick. <laughs> in, the, in the 70s, I was uh, still a teen, and my parents asked me to go visit some relative in New Brunswick, and it, initially I was going to say no, but it's like, I was, wait a second, New Brunswick, uh, <laughs> Tim Beckley. So I came, I excused myself to go for a walk, and I searched up and down the downtown area to try to figure out where, where Tim Beckley might be. Mm. <laughs> well, the house is still there. <laughs> I, alas, I didn't find it, but yeah, you you pointed that out when we first uh, met at the house. Yeah, yeah, it's still there, yeah. Um, are you ready, Doria, or should we go to Carol next? I'll go to Carol. Okay. Go ahead. I, I just don't, you know, just there's so much. Um, there's a lot of memories. And like Michelle said, it's really hard going to his apartment and opening the door and not hearing him either yelling at someone on the phone or, <laughs> you know, it's just, even though when he got in a bad mood and yelled, that's still a good memory to me. I miss that. I actually miss that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, he, he but, seems to have been quite a, quite a person, a multidimensional person with yeah, many talents yeah. and many interests. And uh, people that I've spoken to, uh, even beyond uh, those of you who gathered here today, had very uh, good memories of Tim and very good feelings and uh, felt that uh, he had helped them uh, in their particular life journey uh, as well. Yeah, that, 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 that's him. That was, that was him. Even like when I would go over, um, I would clean for him. I would do his books for him. And then we go to dinner. We go pick up Carol, go to dinner. And on the way to pick up Carol, he just tell me a story. So even going there, I missed the stories. It would always be a new story he would tell me about it. You know, I always used to try to talk him into writing a book about himself when he went traveling and different things, because those were the best stories he would come back with. It was uh, things that he did when he was traveling trouble he got into and <laughs> different things like that. I always tried to get him to write a book about himself, but he, yeah, he wouldn't do he it. Did. I, I, I seem to remember, I, I have no idea where this is or if I still have it, but I seem to remember like the early adventures of Timothy Green Beckley, uh, something like that, where he talked about his, his earliest uh, psychic experiences and some of his adventures as a young man. Oh, wasn't that like when he was a kid, Tim? I think that's from when he was maybe a teenager. Is that what you're talking about? Because I, I know he wrote right some now. kind of book way when he was really, really young. So this will be the further adventures of Timothy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The adult, the adult, the adult, yeah, the adult oh. version. <laughs> <laughs> and you accompanied him on some of these adventures as well. I remember when we first met and then in subsequent conversations, you shared some stories of you, you, that you went with him on some of his adventures. Not really so much me, but my brother, my one brother, they used to, I, I had kids, but my brother didn't have kids. So my brother did a lot of traveling with him. Not me so much. If I went anywhere, it was him, I and Carol. We would, you know, go somewhere every now and again, but nothing like my brother did. He would travel to Colorado with him a lot. I have to get your brother to come on uh, um, to share some of his memories on the future show. All right, you met him. You met Brian. Yes, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. 
He's my yeah. Facebook friend. Occasionally, he likes something that, that I post. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's hard to get a hold of sometimes. I, you know, I haven't seen him in a couple of weeks. I haven't talked to him in a couple of weeks. But um, yeah, he's always out and about. Now, Carol. Uh, Hi, Carol. <laughs> your artwork is very distinctive, and uh, um, it's hard to separate uh, Tim's work with uh, you know from your work because your work was so much a part of illustrating uh, his work. Be it collected stories or uh, original uh, um, things that that he did. Um, do you have any stories you'd care to share or any? Uh, um... Yeah, well, he inspired me to uh, go back to doing art. I had stopped doing any drawing after I, you know, left school. Um, and when I started going to the New York School of Occult Arts and Sciences in 1969. That's when I knew of him. And then I moved in with a friend of his. I started rooming with Wally Elmwar, the White Witch of New York. And, you know, she was a good friend of his. And that's when I got together with him. And I actually, you know, he asked me to do some art. And I actually did some artwork at that time. And I wasn't very good. <laughs> I've improved a lot. Uh, but, you know, it was very, and he um, really, he inspired me. And he also, he taught me a lot of things, unusual things. He's responsible for, I felt like bringing the magical universe to me. He and uh, Wally, you know, made me aware of, I guess the paranormal all around. And I remember he, he taught me to identify aliens in a crowd. I mean, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, it was really exciting, the conferences, the UFO conferences. And once in a while, that somebody would show up who was not from here. <laughs> and uh, I remember Aura Rays showed up at one of the conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, but people don't know who she She was a space woman yes. from the planet Clarion oh, yeah. on the other side of the sun. And uh, one time, I was always responsible for taking care of the book table selling the books and I was always a nervous wreck because I was nervous about having to deal with people and making change and you know when tons of people would come to the book table and we used to say they stormed the book table <laughs> they you know they don't want something all at once they you know they want to ask questions and you know, one help all at once. So it, I was always a nervous wreck. But this one afternoon at the conference in uh, Gramercy Hotel, I think it was 1980 or 81. My memory's not so good. But it, there was nobody there. For some reason, it was a, a period where I guess there was a seminar going on. There was only this one petite, very pretty petite woman at the book table. She, I remember she was wearing a, a beret type of hat, and I don't remember the color. When I did her portrait, I drew it, I made it red, but I don't think it was red. I think it was probably navy or something. And she was looking at the books, and she asked me the price of a book that she picked up. And I told her what I thought was the price. And she said that on the inside, it had a different price. And I remember I, I told her, well, sometimes prices change. Mm -hmm. Inadvertently, I overcharged her for the book. She she paid for the book, and then <laughs> oh, she wasn't alone. She had there were these two little guys with her. They were also very petite, and I, I remember thinking, "Oh, they must all be related. They kind of look alike." <laughs> and then you know, when she paid for the book, you know, she didn't argue about the prices. And then she let she after she left, Tim came over and he said that was Aura Rains. <laughs> and and I, I just, you know, and I told him, how come I, I didn't occur to me? And I felt it should have occurred to me because he had channeled a few nights before. And when he channeled it, she, she was the last person to come through. And she had said something when she finished, I'll see you at the conference. But I didn't think she meant it literally. I mean, I, 
you know, but that was her. And he told me that, you know, and I told him, how come I didn't, it didn't occur to me. He said, well, she probably kept you from, from realizing it. You know, she probably did a little mind control. Or, you know. or, or Rains is, uh, when I was experimenting with the uh, channeling and uh, UFO aliens uh, way back in the day, Aura Rains was one of the ones that came through. And then, I, of course, I looked her up. And uh, there was a whole thing with Clarion and Counter Earth and uh, uh, all this mythology. Uh, it's funny you would bring up Aura Rains today because Aura Rains is not something that comes up in conversations. Uh, but I'm teaching a class to kids about the mythology of our solar system and how uh, different people believe that there are different planets and the planets were in other orders and so forth. And I was going to talk about Clarion being on the other side of the, uh, our Earth in orbit. Uh, so, so again, that's such a rare thing to come up in conversation. So, do 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 do. And you've continued your art, uh, Carol. Uh, what type of art are you doing these days? Still occult art or? Um, yeah, fantasy type of art. Yeah. Just I, I like well, I enjoy the the drawing of uh, UFOs of various shapes and sizes and colors and uh, aliens, fairies, elves, things like that. <laughs> I just like fantasy art. And I like your fantasy artwork. Uh, <laughs> what I've seen of it on Tim's books and uh, that you've sent me, uh, it, it is awesome artwork and uh, I'm glad that you're continuing and I hope to see it around in the public eye a bit more. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> yeah, that would, that would be really nice. Have any of you, because you were the closest uh, to, to Tim, um, have any of you experienced Tim uh, after he passed? Like for instance, I had a dream about Tim uh, at one point and Marcus talked about uh, Tim uh, reaching out uh, to him. Uh, have you guys have any experiences of Tim since he uh, left? I, I've seen him in dreams. Uh, I, think, I think I have astral experiences. And when we, um, the first time that we had like a memorial dinner on his birthday, that that day I he, I felt like he was there. Mm -hmm. I could I could see him, and I, I you know I felt like he was really there. Because now when I I feel him, I feel him like being further away. But at that day, I felt like his presence, like really close by, like he was with us. Yeah, on and off. Yeah, yeah. Certain things that we do, certain places we go, we kind of like sense them being with you. Yeah. How about you, Michelle? Uh, same thing. Uh, you know, I was present for that that dinner, and uh, trying to think, there was a day I was here in my apartment, and there was a day where I felt like he, like I could hear him talking to me here, but I can't remember what he was saying. Um, but mostly it's at his apartment. I, um, uh, there was one day where I had, you know, a lot of the stuff in that apartment uh, I've thrown out, you know, I'm, I'm donating what I can, I'm keeping what I can, and, you know, but there's stuff that needs to be thrown out, and so I had, a, like, a garbage removal day, and I can't explain, you know, there was no words or anything, but he was angry, <laughs> he was so angry, I could just feel it, um, and it's not me projecting, I went outside to watch the garbage truck leave, and ugh, angry. And you know what? I did not feel his presence in the apartment for like a couple of weeks. Mm. He was like giving me the silent treatment. Oh, but now we made up. He's back. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, I mean, I just you know what? I still when I walk into the apartment, I say hello to him. Sometimes I get sad because I don't see him there, but I I feel him there. Um. And it's for, you know, besides that silent treatment time period that we were in a fight, besides that, it's just as strong as ever. I feel him there, you know, as if uh, he was just there yesterday, you know, and it's been 
God, a year and a half already? Yeah, it's going to be two yeah. years in May. Time goes by. Um, so yeah, I definitely feel like he's still around, but I, um, God, I really wish I could remember what it was about fear that he was talking to me. Because it was not long after he died. Um, I guess not meant to be. But... If you remember, we'll come back to you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and uh, I, I want to thank uh, all of you. And uh, before we proceed with uh, one of the intrepid adventures that I wanted to do <laughs> by Tim Swartz, uh, I will uh, I have, I'll extend an open invitation. You guys are phenomenal uh, uh, people. And uh, what do you call it? You're, you're, you're incredibly awesome. And uh, even though it's not your primary focus, you are interested in uh, UFOs and ghosts mm -hmm. and things like that. So you have an open invitation. I'll send you uh, emails or personal messages on, on Facebook. If you'd like to participate in any of the discussions uh, that we have, you're welcome uh, to do so. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And if you don't, that's okay too. It's, it's totally okay. <laughs> Thank you, and if you remember your if you remember your story, if you have any other stories, again, we have plenty of time. Thank you. And now the one, the only Tim Swartz leads the way, who's taken the torch of Timothy B. Beckley. <laughs> I'm very honored to, to be part of your adventure, uh, Tim. Thank you so very much, and uh, you're a great friend. Oh well, thank you very much for uh, inviting me here tonight, uh, uh, Hercules, I appreciate it. Um, I, I do I do want to go back just real quick to something that Carol had said about uh, selling uh, uh, Aura Reigns, uh, uh, an overpriced book. I'm surprised that Aura then didn't come back later in a channeling session demanding a refund off of the, uh, the, the book that you sold her, Carol. So, you know, <laughs> just goes just goes to show that, you know, you got to uh, she she was a good, good spirit there and uh, uh, not uh, um, not prone to demanding refunds. <laughs> let, me, let, me say, let, let us butt in. Carol says she did. She did come back in a later session, <laughs> but she was like joking. She started laughing and said, you cheated me. <laughs> <laughs> It was really fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise <laughs> me at all. <laughs> and, and, Tim, and Tim said she should have told us who she was. We would have let her take any book she wanted. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't have charged her. Uh, well, unfortunately, you know, any time that uh, uh, I was with Tim, uh, you know, we we never did, you know, see any, you know, uh, uh, possible. Uh, uh, extraterrestrials, even though, I mean, you know, we would, uh, the, um, the few times that I managed to get to Manhattan and, and visit him, you know, we'd, we'd go out in the streets, you know, go get something, eat or something. And we were always, you know, oh, could that be one? Nah, nah, he's too weird to be, you know, an extraterrestrial. <laughs> uh, uh, but um, for me, I first, um, well, I'll say this. One of the first UFO types of books that I ever bought just happened to be a book by Tim Beckley that, um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, was, I wasn't I was even a teenager yet, and I had gotten a, um, a catalog of books from Gray Barker of uh, uh, Saucery and Press. And uh, uh, one of the one of the books that he was selling was Tim's uh, first book about um, Richard Shaver and, uh, uh, and and underground or you know uh, underworld mysteries. I can't remember the exact, yeah the exact title because he's republished it several times under different titles. And um, but uh, years later, then uh, in the early '80s, when I was uh, working at a television station in uh, Dayton, Ohio, I had uh, uh, secured an interview with uh, J. Allen Hynek, who just happened to be at the uh, uh, the Air Force uh, um, uh, Museum that was uh, uh, near the uh, Wright Patterson Air Force Base. And uh, after I did that interview, I uh, uh, was able to uh, uh, put it up on uh, the CBS news feed, which at that time, you know, this is pre-internet, 
uh, stations could put uh, uh, local interest stories up on this new feed and it would uh, go up on the satellite. It was courtesy of CBS. So then any station across the country who that was a CBS station could pull stories uh, off of this news feed. And, and obviously a station in Manhattan uh, pulled it off because Tim Beckley, uh, uh, how he found my number, I don't know. Uh, he called me at the station and wanted to know if I could uh, provide him a VHS copy uh, uh, of of that story for him. And uh, so I did. And, you know, I mean, we we talked on the phone a couple of times and uh, um, uh, 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 sent letters back and forth. But, you know, we kind of, uh, um, you know, went our separate ways for for a little while and uh, a few years later i was living in indianapolis and just out of the blue beckley uh, sent me a letter again i'm not quite sure how he found me in indianapolis uh, uh he was always really good <laughs> at that but he was just getting ready to start a new magazine um uh called uh, ufo universe and uh, uh wanted to know if um i wanted to write some articles for it and um, uh, at that time, I was newly married and uh, um, had access to um, a word processor because in my younger days, when, you know, in college, when I wrote uh, UFO articles for, say, like uh, a Saga magazine and things like that, I hated it because I had to use a typewriter. I hated typewriters. I, you know, bad speller. Um, I, I was a good typist. I was a fast typist. But then, you know, you have to go back and try to repair everything. And I, I and I just hated that. And that was one of the reasons that I kind of stopped um, writing articles. Uh, uh, and of course, you know, being in uh, doing television, that takes up, you know, that's a 24 hour seven day a week job. So, you know, I was like, yeah, of course, you know, I've got, uh, uh, I've got this word processor, you know, a lot easier. And uh, really that's how our, the, the, the second phase of our, of our friendship started. And, uh, and from that time on, that would have been, you know, uh, what, maybe around, it would have been the early 1990s, I think when he started mysterious universe and um so, and from that point on i mean we just uh, we just continued uh, uh uh writing together he he asked me if i wanted to uh, start writing books for him and you know i was like yeah of course i mean this you know i i enjoyed doing this stuff um you know whenever i had a chance to to get to manhattan i would always uh, uh go and, <laughs> and visit him in, in in his apartment and it's uh, it his apartment was everything like uh uh michelle and dory and carol has, has described <laughs> <laughs> and that was um i don't i don't know if i'd ever if i ever went back to manhattan after tim put in his tiki bar which took him <laughs> It took up even more space, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I mean, and, and his place was really crowded uh, when I was there, you know, pre Tiki Bar. <laughs> uh, so, now you understand why it's a year later and we're still working on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I just, like I've said before, I, I do not envy any of you having to. <laughs> having to clean out his apartment and then you know as as michelle said the you know obviously picking up those vibes of him being angry for having to throw away some of the stuff and you know yeah i'm, I'm sure that there was probably a lot of stuff hidden behind that tiki tiki bar because he would always tell me that there were files and books and stuff behind it that he could never gain access to you know afterwards so I would not 
want to have been the one to go through that stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I too. went through the stuff, but when the tiki bar was coming down, I left the room. <laughs> I didn't want no part of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Though, you know, to me, it would be almost like a treasure hunt, you know, because of all the stuff that he said could be behind there. Oh, there, was a, there was a lot. Was I really? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so I was always kind of Tim's accomplice, I guess, uh, when he uh, had a had a new wild idea and and he had a lot of wild ideas and you know some of them you know ended up working out really well i mean he uh, he got it in his head one time that uh, he wanted to produce uh some uh, um uh, direct video movies mm -hmm. and uh, uh he had uh, he had done a, um, a an actual like you know uh, uh, i think he it was shot originally on 35 millimeter you know back in the 70s a movie called uh, a driller and so he kind of wanted to do that again except you know using the uh, uh the newer technology and of course you know that was something i was familiar with and uh, at that time sony had just come out with uh, uh like the first ever uh a digital prosumer ca cameras that were uh, uh, really you know, easily affordable and uh, uh, you could uh, plug them directly into a computer for um, uh, uh, nonlinear editing. So we got a couple of those uh, uh, cameras and uh, went to work and ended up producing three, possibly four <laughs> of these direct-to-video direct uh, uh, movies of, of questionable quality. <laughs> fun though. I remember the vampire one uh, when I came in. The vampire one was the one that uh, had come out recently. That was and, it, reviewed. Uh, and you know that that movie uh, you're talking about, the Curse of Ed Wood, is uh, uh, that's that's the that's the clean title of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and you know, I mean, there was nothing pornographic, you know, about these movies. They they would be considered, you know, like something you would see on, say, like uh, uh, HBO or Cinemax late at night. And that's what we were going for. You know, we weren't going for anything uh, crass. Just just kind of, uh, 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 you know. Uh, bloody sexy naughty fun and and i think that uh, we accomplished that the curse of ed wood actually ended up being really big in japan i mean that sounds like a cliche but uh, uh, uh they bought a bunch of those uh, for whatever reason who knows <laughs> and uh you know every once in a while i'll still actually run across one of them on uh, uh streaming say like on tubi or uh, youtube or some of these other <laughs> places so you know it's 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 amazing the legs that uh this this kind of uh, uh impulse idea that tim had at the time uh, uh, ended up having it, 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 and what Tim would do is he would have his camera and, uh, and I, you know, I came to Manhattan a couple of times to, uh, uh, to shoot stuff with him, but then a lot of the stuff was just uh, stuff that he shot on his own. He actually, you know, went out to, uh, um, his sister's house in, in New Jersey to, uh, uh, and I think, I think Michelle, uh was was there as, as as a teenager so i'm sure that had to have been a lot of fun <laughs> i have excellent stories from the filming of that that was jungle eating lesbian vampires skin, <laughs> no, skin eating jungle skin, skin eating jungle tramps jungle tramp. <laughs> that was epic yeah i imagine I mean, so you know so tim would shoot all of this stuff and then send it to me and then i would have to try to edit it together you know with stuff then that i shot combine it all together to make some kind of coherent <laughs> film out of it and uh um so and, and he also did uh oh, oh what was it the uh um the the I can't remember the title now, but Sandy Hook. Uh, um, oh, the Sandy Hook massacre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not quite sure. I don't know. He may have shot some of that as well. 
at uh, uh, at, at at your house in 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 New Jersey, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that, and mostly down the shore. Yeah. Because that's the one Carla was yeah, in, and Carla got hurt. Yes, yeah. yes, that's the one. That's they wanted the one. to do an abandoned building. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't have been in there. But right. They, yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely guerrilla filmmaking at it at yeah. the at its <laughs> yeah. best. You know. <laughs> I actually found the camera that you're talking about. Oh I, yeah. That, yeah, and I also found the original reels from Driller. Oh my oh. gosh! So the, I got uh, all that stuff too. Yeah. So, um, uh, what what format are they on? You know, it's a it's in a film canister. Oh, okay. Uh, so I didn't open it and really inspect it, and but there's also a bunch of stills from the movie as well that are on those like thirty five millimeter slides. Mm -hmm. Right, um, right. Well, they would actually at the time they would actually cut frames from the movies right. and, you know they'd make a copy of their own cut frames from the movies and then mount them for yeah. those slides and then send them to magazines and right, you know right. newspapers and stuff you know uh, for publication wow that's you know see now he thought he thought that that film was lost so uh, I it, found, yeah, well yeah. i'm not sure if it's the whole entire film mm -hmm. there's i found two film canisters in different locations in the apartment <laughs> Yeah. And they both say driller on it. Mm -hmm. um, so I have them together and I have it together with um, you know, a bunch of those slides. And he even has the um the projector for like with the carousel for those slides. Right. Okay. I don't know if it functions, but I found that as well. So I've got a little I got quite a collection going on, guys. And I found the um the poster, the driller poster that oh. they hang up in the movie theater. Mm-hmm. Which I got upset because he folded it. Oh. He like folded it like a notebook, and I was right. like, "Why, why uh. did you do that?" <laughs> yeah, down three of them, hidden in way back in a closet. Oh wow! Yeah, see, yeah. if those have been rolled up, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, like the poster, they you know. But, but I found you know. some of the some posters that were rolled up for mm -hmm. Driller, but not the one that they would hang in the movie theater. Right. Those for some reason he folded. Mm. And I can remember one time, I knew he, I was a lot younger and I knew he made the movie Driller. And we had an adult theater up the highway from where I live. Mm. And I can remember going to the grocery store one day and seeing him, his name <laughs> out, on the, <laughs> out on the highway for mm. Driller. I, was like, I had to call my mom right away. Mm. As soon as I got home, I said, like, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> Well, you know, unfortunately, the uh, the distributors of that film, I guess, just just robbed him blind, which is not yeah. and is not uncommon. And and he probably, I mean, you know, he he wrote articles for the adult film business, so he should have very well known that that was going to happen. And I think that was one of the reasons why he kept control as much as he possibly could on the little films uh, that that we did. You know, uh, you know, he would he would find people that would distribute them, but he kept close watch on, you know, like the, the money coming in or sometimes the lack of money <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, coming in. Uh, but, uh, um, you know, it's uh, it's it's funny because, you know, Hercules asked whether or not uh, uh, any of you have have felt his his presence. And, you know, I wish I could say that that I have. I mean, I've had a few dreams, uh, but uh, I tend to be kind of a um, a. a, a a psychic dead zone around me <laughs> that, uh, you know, and, and it's funny because I've had, you know, a number of, of ghostly experiences in my life, but when it comes to, you know, like very personal ghostly experiences, um, very few and far between, but I keep expecting, you know, to, to get a phone call from him or cause you know, he would call me probably at least, at least once a day. And, yeah. and then, you know, uh, uh, numerous emails. I mean, I have uh, my one of my email accounts that he would always write me to. It's 
it, it amazes me now how little email I get from that because, you know, Tim compromised the space on that one all the time. But, but that was because we were constantly working. That was the thing about yeah, Tim. Yeah is that um you know he was always working on a pro uh, on probably at least five projects at the same time you know and uh uh so i mean once what once one was finished you had four more to take care of and uh you know when you got then the next one there was another five then that 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 cropped up which to me was a lot of fun you know i i, I always enjoyed doing that and uh, I always enjoyed uh, uh, writing books for Tim, coming up with uh, concepts uh, uh, for books that, you know, maybe if I didn't think that I was capable of writing it, that he could bring in, you know, he could take it to somebody else and, and bring it in. And because of that, um, you know, we've been trying to, um, uh, to start putting out uh, books along the same vein as uh, 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 Global Inner Light. Uh, uh, communications. I mean, you know, there's there's no way that uh, uh, that I would be able to have the the <laughs> the energy to um, to stay up to what Tim was was doing. But you know, I mean, kind of in his um, you know honor, uh, uh, we we want to kind of we want to keep that ball ro rolling. You know, there are our latest, and we we put this out a couple of months ago was uh, 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 Alien Artifacts. There you go. There you go. Alien Artifacts. And and I put it on it. Timothy Green, we put up Timothy Green Beckley's Alien oh. Artifacts. You know, and uh, like the first, uh, really the first uh, page inside, it says dedicated to our, to our friend, Timothy Green Beckley, Mr. UFO, Godspeed with your journey on the mothership. Aww, thanks, so, Jim. Yeah, and uh, so I mean, probably um, you know, as long as we're putting out these types of books, we will have some kind of you know mention or dedication to Tim Beckley, you know, in it because none of us would be doing this stuff today if it hadn't been for Tim Beckley. You know, I mean, we all have our different stories, and uh, uh, but but you know. Uh, uh, Tim was kind of the the central pivot for 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 all of us, and you know we wouldn't all be here talking about him today, you know, if it wasn't for him. Well, of course not. You know, that's that was a, that was stupid. That was a stupid statement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, I mean, it was it was just it was always just so much fun uh, 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 working for him, and and you know, it's you know a lot of people would always uh, say that. Uh, they couldn't quite understand, uh, uh, um, you know, how we got together, how we ended up working together, because we seem to be kind of uh, opposite personalities. And, you know, it is somewhat true. I mean, I tend to be, a, you know, like a little bit more uh, uh, reserved uh, uh, compared to uh, Tim being outgoing. But then again, I think uh, probably everybody... Uh, um, compared to Tim would be considered <laughs> reserved. <laughs> true. Very true. Uh, but 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 actually I mean you know we had Tim and I have a, a lot of very similar interest and uh, and, and I think that's what uh, uh, kept us friends for all these years because I mean we were always surprised oh yeah you like that too uh, I mean you know we liked like the same kind of movies same kind of books uh you know just uh, uh same kind of kind of like sick black humor at times uh, uh but uh, um i i tell you i mean you know it's just uh, I, I every day i consider myself blessed that uh, uh that i was tim beckley's friend and i'll leave it at that hercules we, you know, I, i've probably eaten up more time than i should well, have but you know so short to tim you are the person who's holding the torch and continuing the tradition and you're you are uh, honoring uh, tim as you uh, do so and again even if you didn't personally investigate the paranormal the tales you collected and wrote about and published and spread um, helped inspire uh, people like me so, you know, you're selling yourself short. You're a very <laughs> important part of Tim's adventure and continuing on to this day. 
Well, and I should say also that uh, um, uh, the book I just uh, showed you, Alien Artifacts, Hercules has uh, an excellent chapter in that as well. We're working on a new one now that uh, Hercules has contributed a chapter. So hopefully in the next, uh, you know, uh, two, hopefully two or three months that we'll have that finished and, uh, and released. Thank you so very much, Tim. You're awesome. And uh, thank you. My pleasure. Now we move on to Carol Linda Gonzalez. Greetings, Carol. Hi. How are you? Hi. Um, I can't speak at length the way the others have spoken. I never worked with Tim. I'm from the other side. I'm one of the people who attended conferences and was involved in that respect. I met him when I was a teenager. I remember hearing his name. Um, I went to some of Wally M. Lark's meetings. I do remember meeting Carol. Carol Rodriguez and Antonio Honeas. But, um, and I went to, I went to a, a gathering he had in Phoenix, a few, a few conferences, very interesting. I had had an experience and uh, that was my interest in it. And then for some reason, it kind of went out of my mind. I don't remember it. I don't remember anything. And then when I joined Facebook, maybe in the early 90s, suddenly it all came back to me. I saw Tim's name and I contacted him and I asked him about Wally. I remember Carol Rodriguez. I remember all the people that, uh, what was it? There was a fellow who had a name that was like a color. I forget, it was like a rock singer. Oh, Blue Ocean. Blue Ocean. Yes, right, exactly. Blue Ocean. I remember meeting all those people and dealing with them. And after that, after I reintroduced myself, he remembered me because I had gone to some of these things and he became my go-to person. If I had a question, I went to him, he always answered me. I was, I'm part of, I got back into UFOs specifically because of that experience. And I was trying to get him to come to Tim, Nick Curdo's group, um, but he was already ill and he couldn't do it. And um, pretty much that's it. My go-to person, any question I had, that's who I went to. He was always wonderful, answered every question I ever had. And uh, he knew everything. One, mm -hmm. time, one time I asked him, why don't you write a book on the history? And he, he kind of like, wait a minute, I write books all the time. But <laughs> I meant like a, his, a serious history in terms of, he's part of the history of, a UFO experience. How many, how many people would know anything about him, about it, if it weren't for him? Very yeah. few people. He was there at the beginning. He, I remember the flying saucer news. He knew what it was. I remember meeting so and so. He knew what it was. He had a meeting. Um, what was that famous the Mothman guy? I remember meeting him. John Kiel. Yeah. Tim yeah. knew everything. Uh, everything at the beginning. A very important person to write something serious about, serious about his, his activities and what he did and what he knew. People don't remember him now, young people don't. So I just wanted to add that and that's why I'm here. I wanna keep it going. People have questions, people are seeing things, people wanna know. Well, uh, Tim's books are still available through Amazon and other uh, places. Yes. We can all help by promoting those uh, books. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's some idea I wanted to discuss with everybody. Um, we can uh, pick like authors from different books and interview them about the book and promote the, the books. Uh, and we have the other Tim who's carrying the torch with Zontar Press. Absolutely. And uh, publishes uh, uh, material uh, that's in the spirit of what uh, Tim Beckley was doing. So if you want to join uh, to keep the memory alive, you're more than welcome to. And uh, Carol's been on, I think, one or two of my shows in the past. And oh, yes. I lost, I lost track of you. What happened? I'm available. I'm here. Okay, good. I'll, I'll contact I'll, you. I'll invite you back. And uh, I love Steve. What Steve Reeves, that was my love when I was a teenager. That was Hercules for me. So I'm always looking at anything you post about him. 
Yes, that, that was one of my other inspirations growing up, the people in the Hercules movies, and they encouraged right. me to work out, they encouraged me to get into the human services to try right. to find social monsters and social tyrants, mm -hmm. and all that type of neat stuff. Well, I, I haven't gone anywhere. I'm on Facebook. You can contact me anytime. If there's anything I can help you with, I'm here. I'm so excited that Carol Rodriguez is still active. I know Tim told me that. His, Michelle and the other lady, I forget the Glory. name, but you're so involved in maintaining it. I hope you archive his papers and keep it as a wonderful reference that others in the future can know. When I come across his name, I mention his name. Oh, he's ancient, like young people. They don't know who he is. That's <laughs> what I mean. People need to remember what his, his, uh, his, his gift to them is. And you mentioned Nick Tur Nick Curto and Nick Curto yes. went the flyer on my uh, channel. He has right, right. his own shows and he participates in in several others. And he right. uh, he runs a Disclosure Network New York. He was one right. of the founders. And uh, um, I know that uh, uh, you are a frequent attendee of those. And yes, Mark is uh, very involved with them. Yes, and, uh, I know that uh, Tim yes. is Matthew. <laughs> Uh, on our UFO Entity Enigma podcast, and uh, Dory, Carol, and Michelle met him at uh, um, the memorial that was had originally for Tim, that big uh, Right, right. Right. Tim asked me once, is there a group that's active in New York because he gets questions? And I said, yes, Nick Corder's New York Disclosure. The, the, the only one right now that I know is really active that's, that's normal. Because there's a few other groups that are really <laughs> odd. No. I, I don't want to go into them or mention names, but they're really odd. This is a <laughs> Tim's group is really good with real discussion of all kind all kinds of things, all kind of kinds of people, and he does a wonderful job. So I and I know Hercules, you're supposed to be a come for a, a meeting at some point. Yes, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm speaking there probably in February. I was supposed to speak there in December, but it was canceled. So right. February. I'm working on my calendar now. And uh, although you could say that I'm odd because I'm, I'm certainly eccentric, uh, I started doing my groups in New Jersey that stopped before the pandemic. So we have an um, other world explorers group at the Creskill Public Library. And then we uh, just started an esoteric studies group at the Creskill uh, uh, Public Library. So uh, we're out there talking about these things. And of course, uh, um, talking about uh, Tim's books as well. Thank you so very much. That sure. was a, a different perspective you uh, brought to us. And uh, last but not least, uh, Mark Brinkerhoff and whatever body part that Phyllis uh, decides to show. <laughs> she's not here right now. Ah, uh, she's not here. Okay. Um, I don't know why, but oh, maybe I didn't set it when I talked that I come forward because right now you're my screen. <laughs> it, isn't it supposed to jump around and oh, come yeah. forward? Probably figure it out. Well, it appears differently to everybody here. We had it, it jumps around. I get a, a bold yellow outline to who the uh, school is currently. Don't worry about it. All right, so I won't be full form it for you matter, guys. Mark. It's just it, it doesn't matter. Phyllis doesn't care. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Um, what's the question, Hercules? I I forgot. <laughs> it's the best <laughs> memory yet because I say, memories of Timothy Green Beckley and okay. each of us. Uh, were in his life to a lesser extent like me and to a greater extent like everybody else. So we're remembering him and we're sharing uh, stories and memories. Uh, there we go. Dory's story. stories. Tim talks to you yeah. quite often. So uh, um, I've only uh, seen him a few that. times out on the ship, okay. but it's the ship around uh, above America that's called the big ship there. That's 2,000 out miles so out of body, yeah. out of body. Yeah. Uh, the first time I met Tim was 1976 in New York City at one of his, um, probably Carol, you were there. And I think you were in the front area of the door and let me in. Because I, I remember I talked to someone at the front and they let me in as a guest. And so I was told to come to New York by the crew and they said, don't worry, they'll let you in as a guest. <laughs> so I came down to New York City by myself and um, went up to the door and there was a desk in the inside the, and it was that um it had a theater so i don't remember exactly the address in the, in the 50s east 50s but maybe maybe wrote um 
maybe somebody else remembers that, but it had a, a little mini theater in there, like a movie theater or a stage. And Tim had that day um, some people coming in who were contactees. That was Stella Lansing, where I met Stella, and Betty Hill, and um, a couple of guys, which was really cool, but I don't know their names because I didn't have a flyer. But uh, there were two men who were children at the Fatima incident in 1917. Was when... that at the California California Club? No, it was here in New York City. I yeah, remember. that's a California Club, it was called. He did something like that, I remember. Oh, I... I don't know the name. I was just told the address and I went to it. I was, was that on Fifth Ave when he was in the basement? Oh, I don't remember. Were you like in the basement? There was a few floors and I went to that. But um, the two men that were there, who knows if they're still alive. They were children at the Fatima incident when they said this, you know, the sun came down and dried everybody's clothing and the ground they were all on. And they were there to say it wasn't the sun. It came from a position where the sun was because the clouds were there. And it came down and rotated and spun very fast. And they saw the lights going around it and it was a spaceship. So that was an interesting. Those two men were interesting. But I saw that's where I met Stella. And at the end, Harold asked um, people, um, anybody in the audience have an experience with ETs or they didn't say ETs back then. They called them extraterrestrials or aliens. Um, it was only till the movie E.T. that I came down to New York City to be interviewed for from Spielberg's people in 1978. That, that Tim set up. That Tim set up. So oh. he wanted me to meet with those people. And that was the, um, Spielberg's people looking for a person at a young age who had physical contact with an alien and uh, benevolent. And if they had an experience, so he, they wanted to know who that was. So they went across America and they called Tim. And he said, there's only one person I know and this person upstate New York. And he was, as a child, talking with the ETs and uh, never, all benevolent. So they wanted to meet me. And that was set up in March or some 1978. But this time when I met Stella Lansing, I made friends with her. Harold asked, and he said, anybody out there in the audience have a physical encounter? And nobody, <laughs> nobody did anything, right? And the guy that was sitting next to me, he had talked with me before I got in this, when it came in milling around, looking at books and things. And I talked with this guy. So I told him I had physical contacts. And he said, so he's next to me on the seat. And he says, he nudges me. He says, but you said you did. And I said, yeah, but I didn't want to meet anybody. And he goes, oh, no, he should. So I went like that. And Harold saw me. So he came up to me later and talked with me. And that's how I got to be friends with them, Harold and Tim. And uh, for, gosh, they, we were talking on the phone. Uh, Harold and Tim came up to my mayor pack where I lived upstate on the train and they um I, and I thought they came up by train sometimes i thought maybe they came by a rental car but anyway they came up and uh, another time they came by a train but but they went to the sky watching field with me and you know we had signs in the sky let's say but not big giant ufos coming in we had the moving stars that always showed up for me that are bright stars that stop overhead when they're when there's people around and after that, um, I would come to New York to come to the little things he would put on, um, his little different groups and audiences and yeah. stuff. And we did one in 1980, I think it was, right? With the, at the Christ Church. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, I remember We that. did a thing there at the Christ Church where Tim put it on, our friend Bryce Bond, uh, who I was his cameraman later on and everything. But Bryce would be the announcer Tim put on the show, so he announced it, but then Bryce inter interviewed the people or talked with them and said, this person's next. So Bryce opened for me, and I and Phyllis, you had the slides, right? We had slides at the time? Yeah. A slide presentation in 1980 at the Christ Church, which is on the east side. And that went really well. The people later on came up and told, told Tim that they had the biggest turnout they ever had. We had standing room in the back all over, over the place. So that was pretty fun. And Phyllis and me and Tim, he said, we should do more of these. So time goes on. And uh, I moved to New York City in 1978. And that's how we got to see here and there. Tim would come to our little Christmas parties. Carol came to Christmas parties. Tim would be dancing on the floor. One of our sister-in-laws was dancing with him. Uh, uh, then we went out to dinner a few times, two times at least with Tim, right? Yeah. And once with Peter Robbins and Tim and our friend with us. And we went to that uh, Gramercy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Which place was that? That was cool. You have to admit, Peter Robbins met us there. Tim did eat whatever he wanted to. Yeah, he did. There was was no health food in his. So we had a little UFO talking there at the table, and um, Tim always wanted to. He always has, and uh, I was in. Phil and I would always invite him up for dinner, and him and Carol, right? And he would write back an email saying, "Well, I'm not exactly able to do that today." Maybe another time. So I said, well, we'll come down and we'll pick you up and let's just go out and play around your area. It's fine. And so uh, we didn't do that. But then we had met then at the party that um, our friend, who another friend of all of ours who passed away, had at his apartment. And a UFO came over that day and stopped over. Oh, that was Mike Luckman. Mike Luckman. Mike Luckman. Tim, Tim, Tim Swartz, my, remember Mike Luckman. Oh, that's true. That yeah, because really- he was... He was uh, Harold and Mike were really close too, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Mike Luckman was a big tall guy, and he had a beautiful little party at his house. Carol, I think Carol, Carol Ann was there with us, right? Carol Ann at that time. I wish, yeah, that, I wish there, yeah. Yeah, deck in the back, and a oh. UFO. I was contacting, contacting, and suddenly they said, "Look up!" So I turn around, I look up, and a UFO was sitting above, and I pointed. Tim was sitting with Carol, and I'm like this. Because <laughs> I was far away from him, I was like this, and Tim goes, "Yeah, that's the sky, Mark." <laughs> <laughs> and the UFO was sitting there, big, bright, shiny one, like a silver, and it did its little thing, moved along, and then flashed off. They just shut down, like dematerialized. But they don't look, you know, like they're just like a giant sphere. Yeah, but very tiny spheres. So, what, what would you say about the size of a giant O on your? keyboard well they're quite high up but they're so high but that um that's how they communicate i do a call and they come over and they'll stay for a few seconds or minutes and that's it they're gone that's just saying hi i think the last time we saw tim was uh, at pine pine bush pine bush with carol carol Ann. yeah and we were hoping and, he would stay for the lectures later on that night yeah. but he was just wasn't feeling well yeah that was but carol Ann, was that 2018 do you remember Pine Bush? When yeah, I, right. I, I don't really remember oh, when, when I went, when I took this. Yes, Dory was there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, probably like, yeah, 2017 or 18. Yeah. 2018, that's what I was thinking too. I have the t shirt that we got from there. And that was yeah. the photo you sent, the photo you sent of, of Tim and us. And, I, and we treasure that. We got that. Thank you. And that was a, the best time ever. We had so much fun up there. And that was the first time we went. And that was the last time we went. That like, was the first time I had ever gone. Yeah, you drove and, them up, right? Uh, I went, when did I, we, we, I took Carol last year, we went. We went again last year because they didn't have it yeah. for a while because of the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. They kept inviting me to speak and then I wouldn't hear from them. And so, so how was it last year? <laughs> for four year? years. How, how was it last year when you went? Well, it was a, it wasn't as good as it was when we went that one year. Uh, they didn't have the parade, and I basically was taking my grandson so he could see that. I really thought he would enjoy the parade, and because oh. of the COVID, they still weren't having the parade. Oh. But we still had a good time. Um, they didn't have quite as much shows and different things as they normally do, but it was it was still a nice day. It was a long drive, but. It was a nice day. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm driving there too. Drive, yeah. Hercules, we should all go one time all together. It'd be fun. That, that would be great. I was, I was thinking of some conversations we had before the pandemic really uh, took hold about uh, having like a field and trips and investigations and things like that. So maybe we should pick up those conversations again. And that would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. And a pretty decent pizza like like restaurant there. At Pine oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we so sent us to it. It was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Any place you have water or something. And um, they're, they're, the people in the town were great. They're fun people. And they loved you. Really friendly. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody dresses up and walks around. I get a kick out of that. That, that was great. Fun. Yeah. I actually had a space suit, but I don't think I'd wear it. No, you, you can't. <laughs> it anymore. I don't think so. <laughs> it's a closet. Yeah. Why not, Mark? You could say Klatu Varata Nikto. <laughs> Um, it would be fun. Uh, so my, my last times with Tim, I'd have to say was always on the phone. 
Yeah. We're discussing the books and the things we wrote into, you know, the, added some stories to the books that he was putting together. And, and then being on the shows with Tim and Tim. Mm-hmm. Tim and did, Tim. Did you tell them that that's, he's why we got, Tim used to love to say, well, I'm the reason that Mark and Phyllis got together. You could peek in there. No. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Here's Phyllis. Hey, Phyllis. We have to see your face. All right. <laughs> it's like aliens. You're here. They come. You know, oh, Carol, Carol Ann, Carol Gonzalez, but Carol Ann, when, um, whatever that meeting was, I might have been at that one, but it definitely the one that I was at in 1980, the woman with the beret was there. And I remember it being like a dark blue or something like that, because I noticed yeah, that was like, like baby blue. something blue. And since I'm short, as people know, I've been mistaken by Betty Hill to be one of the aliens when I first met her, because I had <laughs> long hair at the time and she was avoiding me. It was funny. That was 1976. So it was it was just funny, but she says, I thought, she told me, finally, we got to talk to her. She goes, um, I thought you were one of those other aliens that are, you know, good people, but they come and infiltrate into the meetings. I said, I know the ones you're talking about, but I'm not that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I am that, an alien. So it was kind of fun. We became good friends, Betty Hill and me, and um, until she passed. And I talked to her on the phone a lot. And we visit, Phyllis and I visited her, stayed with her for a week up there in New Hampshire. Stella Lansing was another contactee. She's passed on, but she was good. I visited her twice. Once with my MUFON investigator, Fred Dennis, who I think is on the other side now. And then again, I went with Phyllis. We went to see Betty and, um, and Stella, I mean, too. So we were up there. It was pretty much seeing UFOs for sure and everything going on. But with Tim... He came only upstate about two times that I remember clearly from 1976 to 77 to um, be on a little sky watch with me in the field late at night. Uh, so that was a lot of fun for him and Harold. And ha- they saw things. Uh, and then years later in 78, when I met Phyllis, the next year or so, we were up at the field. And I had a movie camera that Phyllis's friend lent us. And I caught some action on the film, on that film, Super 8 film. But um, at that time, Tim wasn't with us. It was other people like Bryce or something. But we um, used those films in our lectures at the time, and we had slides. And I think uh, the fact that Mark had has so many UFO photographs was why <laughs> Tim put them in the book Repeaters. I, I, I remember uh, you saying, Tim, that that book did not sell very well, the repeater book, UFO Repeaters. Now let me unmute unmute my microphone here. No, actually, I think uh, UFO repeater sold uh, uh, fairly well. Oh, yeah. oh good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It. Uh, uh, I know that was one of Tim's favorite books too. You know that one, uh, the uh, synchronicity of of uh, Philip K. Dick, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. and uh, and and Carol's uh, uh, book of her uh, artwork. You know, he really liked that one quite a bit as well. Oh yeah, all his books were great. I don't have all his books. I mean, I think Hercules has more books than I do. <laughs> I had the books you guys sent me, but also had a few books in the past when I first met Tim. I had one of his earlier books, but I had the Tuella one a long time ago, but um, that he republished. So I'd have to say that was my best excursion with Tim, other than seeing him out of body, and my. I know I have to tell Dory and Michelle is that you are sensing him with you because he is there with you. Uh, from what I, when I was seeing him, he was going to try to, because he had no, he was not married, et cetera, but he kind of was very close to Carol. So, <laughs> Carol, yeah. so, so he was, he considers Carol Ann like his wife actually. And he misses you very much. So when when he's tuning in to the apartment, because his presence has been there so long and embedded in the walls, basically, in the area, you feel his presence because he's he's staying with you both as family, as a, um, let's put it this way. You can get permission to be a a friend or a guide or a family member to stand next to your family as a guide friend. And you can sense and intuitively hear him his message that's how you knew he was angry if you were bothered because he he probably wanted to have some kind of memorabilia set up you know that you guys could sell but um <laughs> online, but we saved so much I know that's what he was probably saying 
What? Is that what you're getting right now? Yeah, well, I sensed it when they were talking. I said, oh, he's upset because memorabilia, a thing like that popped in my head. So I'm feeling <laughs> we're tuned in because he's with you sitting there right now. In, in, in he's energy. upset about the tiki bar. <laughs> <laughs> and the recliner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this an old recliner? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It actually was my dad's, and he always had a recliner. And when he, you know, his legs were getting really bad, he couldn't sleep in his bed anymore. So he would sleep in the recliner. Oh. And he, he bought a uh, he bought a new recliner, and he called me five times a day. He couldn't stand it. It was no use to him. It was worthless. So I said, "Listen, I'll bring you my dad's recliner. It's not leather. It's cloth, and." You know, it had the remote where it would, you know, stand you up. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I said, we'll trade. We'll, we'll trade it off, <laughs> you know. So I brought him up. I said, if you like it, you keep it. If not, you're going to have to get a new one. And he, lo he loved it. He, 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 he liked it. And I had a little car. And I'll never forget this. I couldn't fit it in my car. You know, recliner comes in two parts. I couldn't fit it in the car. So I put the back part in the back seat. And then my son put the part you sat on on the roof of my car well, and strapped it on. And I drove right through the Holland uh, the Lincoln <laughs> Tunnel with it on the roof of my car. <laughs> I'll never forget Michelle and him were waiting in front of the building as I came around the corner. The looks on their faces when they saw this recliner <laughs> on the top of my car. <laughs> I drove all the way from Jersey with that. And, uh, <laughs> Who put it? He together? had it for years. I mean, he, you know. He broke a lot of it, but he had it for years and he oh. just didn't, he needed a new one mm -hmm. and he just didn't want to give that one up. Was it, so, were you able to put it back together easily once you got it together? Oh yeah, they all come in two pieces and the, the back part just, you know, goes, the, oh, you know, okay. your oh. back part just connects to the seat. Wow, cool. Uh, yeah, like the, the way they come. Really sit on these, do so it's like an easy boy. Easy boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I got to tell you many times, guys, when we are at these lectures or any place you're around a lot of people, like Tim would say, because I've seen it, there are other beings there, people disguised as humans. And I've actually been in one talk. Um, well, it's too long ago now. I've been to too many that I gave a talk in. And two people came before I met Phyllis. And two people came up towards me and said, we really liked your talk. And the vibe I got from them was not of this earth. They were a little taller than me, and that's not very tall. <laughs> so I'm thinking it's those aliens that Beth, Betty Hill was talking about. But they looked very pale. And uh, um, at first you couldn't tell if you were looking at two girls or two guys because they had a, a hood. <laughs> and it looked like hair was under there, but not a lot. So I remember they came up and they were always in the back. They were standing in the back or sitting in the back, standing up later. And they just came up when nobody was around me and just came over to say, I really, we really enjoyed your talk. And then I said, thank you very much. And I always say, God bless you. Have a nice day. And, and they just went like that and they turned and left. They didn't take any of their or anything. But that was my earlier uh, lectures when I was giving a talk with a MUFON a man named Fred Dennis. And so he had my slides and he put them in his projector. He would be my projector guy while I stood at the podium talking about the pictures or how I got them. So they do show up. Mm -hmm. And we, I, if they're in the audience, you sense them, but they always leave before the ending of your talk. Usually they seem to get up and just walk out or leave. So I, I haven't seen any at the New Life Expos, but I'm sure they're there somewhere. But it, I, they do show up. So when Tim had his shows, um, his lectures and places, that um, what's her name, the the alien, uh, so shows up, rains. I wouldn't be surprised. And um, uh, you know, I got a question for I you. I just Mark. never go up to people. Have you has uh, Tim mentioned anything about you know the Ashtar command anymore, or is he is he playing with them? Oh, well, from what I gathered from the last time I saw him. And they still, he still goes on trips. So he was training for things, uh, guys. And when I was moving the car, because we have to move the car every two days a week or so. And this was just after he passed away, just after the memorial. 
that we all met at and um, Hercules and Nick, we all came together. And about a week or so later, uh, I was outside the car and I was, I was outside, I parked it, but I had to stay by the car. So I was in the trunk getting something and I had the doorman and some other guy on the sidewalk, but they were talking to me, but we were just talking. So I went and got something out of the trunk, was putting it back and I heard, look up. So I looked straight up in the middle of the road in 84th Street, it's clear. There is a spaceship, comes on, glows and sits there. So I went over to the doorman who has met my angel and I <laughs> came in a long time ago and I pointed up UFO and they came out and they looked, they said, how do you know? I said, do you ever see a bright object that bright in <laughs> morning at 10 o'clock or nine o'clock, whatever time it was? And they went, no. And I said, that's a spaceship. It just popped on and it's telepathic with me. So Tim was in that ship and it was um, one of the t leaders, uh, ca commanders that I know, uh, Leveron, Leveron. And Tim was on the ship as a gift. He wanted to get a bride and, he, and Leveron said he was going to be in the area. He, Leveron is one of the alien commanders who's around in our New York, Pennsylvania, Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut area and Long Island. <laughs> they do a whole big sheer uh, moving around. So I, I heard Tim saying hi and I kind of intuitively saw him in the same way when I talked to them. And he was saying, they brought me here as a, as a treat to just see if you're out or around and, and I'm having fun. So he was still learning about how the ships work. And that was two weeks or so after he, we had that memorial. I mean, remember these are Ethereum light ships. Yeah, they're these Ethereans, physical, you know, they high can, Ethereans. They actually. can manifest. They can, they can come into this dimension. Into our, this dimension. And as soon as they did, and the guys were watching on the sidewalk. I just want to make this fast for Hercules' show. As soon as they were sitting there and the guys came out and looked, one guy was being skeptical, but the doorman wasn't because he's my friend. And they're looking up and I said, you'll see, they're going to move a fraction of a nothing and just shut off because they teleport back out of the system here. And as soon as I said it, they just looked, by. we're going now. They moved like that and then shut off gone so they that always likes to shock the people listening or watching us <laughs> was basically one of the last um when he did that that was um pretty cool when i saw that that they brought him in to, to do that because he was training with them with the different commanders uh, different people there so so the adventures of tim beckley uh, continue yeah, yes. I was just saying, carrying on. <laughs> and he is there. He is with you now, Dory and Carol Ann, everybody there. His energy, his presence is there with you. He, I forgot to tell you, they're given permission by the angelic friends and the beings that are working with them. So in order for them, a uh, soul like our friends who are passed on, who are really in the heaven realm right now, to come to this dimensional plane to be near us so that we feel them really close. Is he, if, I don't want to say he's, he's not stuck. Some souls get stuck and haunt an area. He had, he had permission to come in to do that with an angelic presence who will make you sense his presence with you too, because he is there and, and is full of love. And so he, he is, you'll feel his presence, but the reason he can stay long and be with you is because he has an, one of his guardian angels is right with him, being an energy focus for him to stay this long. They don't um, normally allow that for too long. You've had a visitation from a deceased loved one who just wants to say, I'm feeling good, I'm fine, I'm not in pain. And they appear at the end of the bed or in the dining room or something. And then they just dematerialize and leave maybe the smell of their perfume or cigar smoke or whatever they were famous for, like Ingo cigars. So, and pipes or whatever with cigars. So they can do that. So I just wanted you guys to know you were feeling him. You really are. You really are. Thank you for that, uh, yeah. Mark. Uh, would anybody else uh, like to share anything before we uh, tune out for tonight? Any memories? No, no. The day we met was funny. No, that's okay. <laughs> That'll be for the, the second. Uh, Tim just always said, it's because of me that they became friends together. Yeah. And, and, and today we got to see what? Phyllis' face. I'm yes. fast and amazed. <laughs> there are an alien. In one of your books, Tim. This is like a monumental occasion. <laughs> um, I want to thank everybody. If any of you want to be contacted, uh, kindly share your contact information. We'll put that out there. Um, Dory, do you want to be contacted? Uh, do we? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How can people contact you? Oh, um, 
what do you want? Um, so we have, we are continuing the business. Uh, we do have a bit of an announcement um, coming oh, awesome. soon on that tip. Um, and actually Hercules and Tim, if you would stay on, I wrap up, I'd love to talk to you guys. Okay. Um, but I, I have- doesn't, I don't know, they moved the button for the end of the show, but continue. So oh. we'll talk by email or by phone. Sure. Um, but to contact us is the same old email, Mr. UFO eight at hotmail.com. Awesome. Incredible. I can't wait to hear about uh, your upcoming uh, project. Carol Ann. What? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't really want to be contacted. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, if anybody wants to contact Carol, you could go, they can, uh, contact her through the Mr. UFO and we'll get it to her. Yep. How about that? Okay. Okay. Sounds that, good. <laughs> that works. A lot of people don't want to be contacted on the show and they, they ask people to contact me for them. So that that's uh, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Tim Swartz, how can people contact you and become part of the, the grand new adventure that you <laughs> initiated with Sean Castile? Well, they can uh, find our address if they visit our website, which is still conspiracyjournal.com. Facebook tries to ban it for some reason, but uh, <laughs> just go just go to conspiracyjournal.com and uh, you'll find a place that you can uh, uh, contact us on that site. For uh, all of our books, just go to uh, uh, Amazon or uh, your favorite local bookstore, and I encourage you to please patronize your favorite local bookstore. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Carol, Linda. Yes, I don't really have any reason to be contacted unless you want me to file, do some notaries or file something with the Department of <laughs> Commerce for you. But I, I do want to say it's very exciting to hear that the business will continue. And I was really glad to see Carol Ann Rodriguez. She may not realize it, but Tim used to talk to me about you a lot. So just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Last but not least, Mark and the elusive Phyllis. She's met. She's gone again. She's gone. She's gone again. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can reach us on intergalacticmission.com, uh, etuniversal.com. ET Mark Universal is my arch site. Uh, I'm sorry, etuniversalzone.com. Thank you. For just YouTube. and YouTube, Phyllis. Oh. YouTube so. and Facebook. And the email is the same. So it's Mark Brinkerhoff at Yahoo.com. Everybody, it's 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 heartwarming to see how much uh, Tim still lives on uh, through us and through the memories of very many uh, others. And it's always great to get together with everybody here. Uh, so for that reason alone, I want to keep doing a couple of these a year because at least it'll give me the opportunity uh, to connect with and speak with all of you. Thank you, Hercules. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Honor, honor always to be with you guys, all of us, all of you. Love I you. I want to thank our audience. Uh, this will be on YouTube probably uh, around midnight tonight, if not midnight uh, the following day. Uh, thanks again, everyone. Be well. Take care. Happy and healthy uh, New Year to all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.